Hey everyone, this week I thought we'd take a deep dive into the world of electric vehicles because whilst most people have lost interest in the coronavirus, the car owner virus for electric cars seems to have infected a large swathe of the population and it too is being heavily pushed by the government and the BBC. Plus it was also designed in America but largely manufactured in China. Only an electric car these days offers the buyer the sort of dinner party bragging rights that used to only be attained by going on a safari holiday or joining an exclusive golf club. Ironically, golf clubs are probably most people's introduction to an electric vehicle, but the stuff being put out by the likes of BMW is quite different from an electric golf cart. Although just like at a golf course, people are still very concerned about the range. If you hear a golfing buddy claim he can drive 300, he's not talking about yards, it's the range of his new car. The range of these electric cars are something that few people seem to be concerned with on a day-to-day -day basis, until that one trip at Christmas time when they suddenly realise they were lied to. The advertised range of the completely empty car, not one with luggage and children, or with the climate control turned on, or it being a journey that isn't a flat straight line in Southern California, because battery performance drops by a third in sub-zero temperatures. Well, we can talk about fast charging too, but good luck with that when you discover your third in line and it's going to take you two hours to charge your Volkswagen and finally get back in the road. For me though, the platform killing fault is that these batteries, like the one on your phone, only last a thousand charge cycles, except my iPhone battery costs about 100 quid to replace, whereas a car battery costs closer to 20 grand. That's not much of an issue though for the people that love electric cars and push them on everyone else and live in a world where it's completely normal to buy a brand new car every two to three years. Most normal people are used to buying a second hand car and often riding them into the ground. There are currently thousands of people being coerced into buying a supposedly cheap electric car, and yet they're going to be unable to either use them or replace them in a couple of years. And I honestly don't think the ruling class has any idea of what they're going to face in about five years when public resentment to all this grand con comes to a boil. Actually, talking about anger, I was recently given a pamphlet about anger management, and I lost it. Anyway, let's just run with the idea, though. If Spider-Man bought a Tesla, he'd quickly discover that with great power comes not great responsibility, but great electricity bills. Because these things are not cheap to run either. The cars charge a lot, and that's before you charge them a lot. And you won't have a petrol bill, sure, but they do cost about 20 quid to fill up, so to speak, when you plug them in at home. And that charging infrastructure is going to cost you thousands to have installed at your house. And most people will see that cost as part of a monthly loan repayment that more than cancels out the cost of not visiting the BP garage once a week. And we could talk about the lack of electricians to install the home charging infrastructure, but that's the least of the concerns here. The UK doesn't have close to the sort of spare electrical capacity to replace. 30 million petrol cars with an electric equivalent, most of which are expected to be charging when the lauded solar power is not producing anything because it's night time. As to regular generating capacity, well like the quality of Radio 4, that's been declining for years. We're already at the precipitous stage where the government's already managing to only keep the lights on by granting emergency permissions for coal power stations to remain open for years beyond the legally binding net zero targets that were given. I could talk about the batteries themselves, though, and the millions of children enslaved in the cobalt mines of the Congo. I read a report about human trafficking and how the modern slavery industry is having to go for a transformation as it pivots from Asia towards Africa, where millions of people will be required to work in the next decade or so to sustain the move towards green energy. But according to the car industry, they're not responsible for that, or the battery manufacturing, that's all outsourced. It's not their problem, and as to the government, what's well, as liable to claim that the batteries are made out of rainbows, unicorn fur, and whatever magical stuff it is that Keith Richards must be snorting these days in order to somehow remain alive. It's all just another part of the grand lie though. You've been lied to about the cost, the green credentials, the range, the lifespan, the economics, the ability of the grid to cope with them. But hey, it's all fine because the car can connect to your phone with an app. And it comes with additional features like a self-driving mode, although the owners tend to more often talk about the built-in virtue signals. Personally, the tech puts me off even more. Imagine missing a payment on your self-driving car and it drives itself back to the dealership until you pay a reactivation fee or it listens into your conversation and then reports you to the police because you didn't agree with what a left-wing activist was trying to teach your child. My only hope really is that with so many other things, the tech industry just makes a mess of it all. I remember there was talk for a while that Apple had partnered with Tesla to make a new car, but they were having trouble installing Windows. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.